the unreadable. You're welcome. He climbed on a neighboring stool, propped his elbow on the table, and rested his chin on the hill of his hand. He watched as she peeled the white sticker off the rolled napkin. She folded the napkin and set it and the fork to her left. Grinning, he slid her fork and napkin to her right, waggled his brows, and winked. Her eyes narrowed as she slid her fork and napkin back to her left. Creature of habit? <laughs> I suppose I am. But that's so boring. According to you, maybe. He swiveled her stool and wedged her knee between his thighs. What's the last thing you did that made your heart race? That made the air in your lungs disappear? Crazy is not for me. Microwave, silly putty, slinkies, potato chips, Play-Doh, penicillin. What do they all have in common? I'm sure you're going to tell me. They were discovered accidentally because someone was willing to think outside the box. He tapped the side of his head. Think crazy. What does any of this have to do with where I place my fork and napkin? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He flagged the waitress. Ready to order? Yes, I'm starving. He winked. Good, me too. What can I get you? Ladies first. I'll have a chicken Caesar salad. Anything to drink? He winked. Get crazy. Iced tea, please. Hi, I'm Jags. They shook. And you are? I'm Casey. Good to meet you, Casey. I'll have the potato skins and the volcanic cheeseburger. But if I can get onion rings instead of the fries, that would be great. And... Do you have any soup? No, sorry. No matter. I'll just have... Heck, give me a side of fries and... A Jack Daniels and Coke. Just so I get this right, you ordered potato skins, the volcanic cheeseburger, onion rings, a side of fries, and a Jack and Coke? Perfect. Get this right out to ya. You're not really gonna eat all of that, are you? I'll share. <laughs> Where do you put it? I get a lot of exercise. With his forearm resting on the table, he leaned toward her and grasped her hand. <sighs> Why can't I read you? I'm not following. Head tilted to the side, he focused on her. Blink. What's wrong with you? Star pulled her hand from his grasp. A woman walked by, long mousy hair, tight jeans, and low cut fitted top. Star glared at her. Do you know her? No. Star fidgeted with her napkin and fork. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Like the idea of knowing her is repulsive. She's white trash. Jag sat back, his fingers flexed on his thighs. What exactly is white trash? And how exactly do you know that's what she is if you don't know her? Just look at her. She had to have smothered herself in grease to get those jeans on and look at her makeup. Somebody needs to teach her that less is more. 10 to one, she doesn't have a job. If I had to take a guess, I'd say she has a child and doesn't know who the father is. She probably brings him or her shopping in a diaper and no shoes, and a hundred bucks says she lives in a trailer with three cars in the backyard, and most likely none of them run. You got all that by looking at her? Where's Cam and Maggie? I have a theory about your anger problem. You have my attention. What happens to a dog when you tie it up for too long? I don't care. I 
I'll tell you. Shut your trap. The dog gets mean. Her hand grazed his inner thigh and cupped the bulge in his jeans. Let me help you untie the dog. You can't tell me the last time we were together didn't ease some of your tension. <sighs> My brother's white trash? I don't even know your brother. Cam has no job and has two non running vehicles in his backyard. He doesn't live in a trailer, but it's almost like one. And since he doesn't have any kids, I can't say if he'd dress them to take them shopping or not. You mean any kids that he knows of? Haven't you heard the cliche, don't judge a book by its cover? Where's our food? What kind of person would you say Cam is? Hypothetically speaking, of course. You're getting upset. I, I think we should change the subject. I'm pretty good at reading people, and I'm fascinated by your ability to do the same. I won't get upset. I sincerely want to know what you think about my brother when you see him. You won't get mad? I promise. Well, I'd say... I can't do this. Let's talk about something else. Why don't you tell me about your boyfriend? Well, his name is Ty. He's a construction supervisor for- I didn't ask for his resume. Uh, what then? What do you like about him? I love him. Love is a word many use carelessly, never truly understanding the depth of the proclamation they're making. What's your point? Jags clasped his hands on the table with a genuine smile. What do you love about him? Lots of things. She grabbed Jags' roll of silverware and removed the sticker that held the utensils together. He is very considerate of others. She placed the fork and napkin to his left. He's patient, understanding, funny, romantic. Wow, sounds like a keeper. He snagged both napkins, crunched them in his hand and slid the napkins and forks to the other side of the round table. What was that for? You were telling me how terrific Ty is. <laughs> he tilted his head and looked into her gaped mouth. Great tonsils. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. What do you love about her? I like her sense of humor. I like her honesty. I love her ass. You're making me uncomfortable again. Could you refrain from being so crude? I'll try, but I wasn't trying to be crude. I was answering honestly. Don't ask if you don't want to hear the answer. Our food is taking forever. Did you know by touching a person, I can sense the depth and the color of a person's soul. I can see the parts of a person that lies deep beneath their subconscious. His gaze swept over the length of her body. He grasped her wrist and looked under the table so he could consider the whole package. Scowling, she jerked herself from his hold. Was she some kind of abomination? He couldn't read not one damn thought. Her mind was a black hole of nothing. Hell, he didn't need a sixth sense to sum her up. Would you like to know what I read in you? No. You take the safe route. You like things predictable and simple. You're with your boyfriend because it's comfortable. It's easy. Not one strand strayed from the tightly balled hair at the nape of her neck. She must have used an entire can of hairspray to get it mannequin perfect. Her nails were painted a pale shade of pink, her complexion concealed with plastic precision. Do you ever let your hair down? 
Why do you care? No need to get nasty. I'm just curious. He pulled a strand of her hair loose. Oops, he covered his mouth. One got away, someone called the Pentagon. She tucked the loose hair behind her ear. At least I have a hairstyle. What cut is that, Scooby-Doo? Oh, I'm sorry, do you even know what a hairstylist is? Or for that matter, a hairbrush? He took pride in that not many people existed in this world he didn't love or that didn't love him. But all he felt for this woman was contempt. Perhaps a small part of him was attracted to her, but that was before she opened her mouth. You know what your problem is? I'm sure you're gonna tell me. You need a good fuck. She had turned him into someone he didn't recognize. Lewd and crass were simply not his style. He gave her a sidelong look. What's your boyfriend's name again? None of your business. Well, none of your business is obviously not getting the job done. Because no one can be as uptight as you are if they've been fucked inside out. His hands flew to her head, tugging and yanking, unshackling her hair from its cage. Leaning back, he admired his masterpiece. There. Now we match. You're such a... Uh... Are you searching for the right word, sugar? While you're thinking, let me tell you what you are. You're an uptight, pretentious, frigid bitch. He hopped off the stool, slid his wallet from his back pocket, and dropped two $20 bills on the table. I'm out of here. He grasped her hand and led her through the crowd. They found Star sitting at a table, but she was alone. Where's Jags? He left. Well, what happened to you, Star? <laughs> Jags happened to me. I'm going home. You coming with me or... <clears throat> Do you have other plans? If you say Jags, tell him he can find his own way home. I'll call you tomorrow, okay, Star? Star nodded. Cam took Maggie by the elbow. He opened the passenger door of his expedition, gripped her hips, and placed her on the seat. Where are we going? Cam. What do you fucking think? The tears, they fill my eyes. Cam. I don't want to take you up against a wall in a bar. I want you in my bed. Uh, oh, so then we're going to- Unless you want me to pull over right now and take you in the back seat, I need you to shut your trap. Maggie glanced out the side window, hiding her smile.
They entered the small cottage home. A middle-aged man stood from the couch and with a remote turned the television off. The man eyed Cam, suspicion blatant in his shit-eating grin. He rushed toward Maggie, scooped her into his arms, and twirled her, much like Jag had with Tilly the day Maggie met Cam. He held her at arm's length. Be beautiful. I'm Cam's father. Maggie, uh, this is Douglas Wolf. Dad, this is Maggie. So delighted to meet you. Cam's father hugged him, clapping his back twice. When were you planning on informing me you had a lady friend? Oh, Dad, it's not what you think. Nonsense. Look at her. Darn, how long has it been since you've been with a woman? I was about to suggest you see a doctor, but apparently... All your body parts are working fine. Otherwise, how could you get such a beautiful young woman? Dad, do we have to do this now? What the hell? Cam's face flushed. Was he embarrassed? Maggie turned her head and hid her smile. Maggie recognized a strong resemblance between Jags, his father, and Gramps. But Cam's disposition and dark hair and olive skin were the exact opposite of them. Maybe he was adopted. Is Gramps in bed? Fast asleep. When you come up for air, give me a call. We need to talk. Dad, god damn it. <laughs> Cam grabbed Maggie's hand and led her down a short corridor lined with photographs of Cam, Jags, and AJ. The boys looked older in most of the photographs. She guessed late teens. Two closed doors faced each other on either side of the hallway. He opened the door on the left. Cam yanked his shirt over his head, folded it, and placed it on a cherry bureau. Take your clothes off. Centered above the bureau, a dozen or so cooking books lined a shelf that hung on the wood-paneled wall. The room was immaculate, no clothes on the floor. The comforter pulled tight across the full-size bed, not a wrinkle in the fabric. Stepping out of his jeans, he glanced over his shoulder. What are you waiting for? When she pulled her top over her head, he grunted in satisfaction, <laughs> folded his jeans, and set them on the bureau. He removed his boxers and socks and placed them on top of his jeans. Laying across the bed, he laced his fingers behind his head, his erection reaching for his stomach. Maggie unsnapped her shorts and drew the zipper down. Faster. I'm not in the mood to be teased. She pulled her zipper back up. <laughs> My little fireball. So, you... Want to play? Maggie flipped him off. Cam laughed <laughs> and took himself in his hand. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at this thing. You are fucking killing me. Uh, it's not like you don't deserve it. <laughs> I love you. Uh, I... I can't. Come here, baby. I... I, I can't. What do you mean, no? She didn't love him, but she liked him a whole lot, and the thought of losing him made her insides tremble. Needing a man so completely was scary enough. Why couldn't they just keep things simple? Regular fuck buddies, without the complications and pressure of proclamations of undying love. Hey, if you can't say it right now, then you can't say it, and that's okay. You sure? I said, take 
your clothes off. Smiling, she finished undressing and crawled between his legs. She hovered over his groin. Her eyes met his. With her tongue, she tickled the sensitive slit on his shaft. Circling her tongue around the rim, she licked the salty cream from the head of his cock. With her fingers curled around the base, she began working him in and out of her mouth with lazy, sensuous strides. Cam pulled her up his body. He reached down and plunged two fingers inside her. Uh, I'll wait for you. But until you see it my way, I need you to know that this little tight cunt of yours is all mine. Mm -hmm. Use your words. Yours. Don't fuck around on me. Cam flipped her on her back and positioned himself between her thighs. Lying on his stomach, he draped her legs over his shoulders and glided a finger down her sex. He growled, and every pore of her skin hummed. He dipped a finger inside her and licked her pussy, flicking his tongue along her clit. With his legs hanging off the end of the bed and his head buried between her thighs, he reached up her body and cupped her breasts. Knotting her fingers in his thick, black hair, she crushed his face against her core. The hairs of his unshaven face tickled her folds, and her body vibrated with pleasure. He lingered and suckled, as if savoring a decadent dessert. No rush, no urgency. An orgasm slammed into her. Her body jolted. Curling her fingers tighter in his hair, she swirled her pussy against his wicked tongue. Cam jumped up her body and plunged his cock inside her. The walls of her channel clenched as her orgasm lingered. He rocked his body and took her mouth in a slow kiss, giving her a taste of herself. The rhythmic pulses of her climax faded. Tension eased from her muscles. She wrapped her arms and legs around him, embracing him in the cocoon of her body. Concentrating, she squeezed herself around his cock. Oh, can you feel that? Cam lifted his upper body and stared down at her. When she smiled, he collapsed and pounded, his thrusts powerful, relentless, only the weight of his massive body keeping her from bouncing clear off the bed. Maggie felt the muscles in his back tense, his ragged breath swept warm across her neck, his body stilled, his cock buried to the hilt. Fuck! Quiet filled the room as his body twitched with sensitivity. Would he curse every time she made him climax? She certainly hoped so. Cam rolled off her and collapsed to his back. When Maggie wrapped her body around his and rested her head on his chest, he gave her a squeeze and kissed the top of her head. Maggie traced her finger in figure eights on his bare chest. Only you. Only you. Jags and I are taking AJ out tomorrow night. He's home on leave for the week. You remember me telling you about him? Unfortunately. Can you meet me at Critters around 8? You can meet AJ. We'll have a few drinks together, and then we can come back here. 
She rolled on top of him and trailed kisses down his chest. Hmm, what will we do when we get here? We get naked. Naked? Yep. <laughs>